What's up everybody? Kerwin P. Slippers here. And it's time to clean the carburetors on this 1966 Honda CL160. Now if you watched the first video on it where we got it running, uh, you'll see that the carbs needed to be gone through because they were leaking and it was kind of running crappy. So now we're going to dive into the carburetors and we're going to rebuild this petcock as well. So, first thing I did was turn off the gas, so we ain't got a gas leak. Now, disconnect these fuel lines, because we're going to put new fuel lines on it too. Because you can tell these are pretty, pretty old. They don't make it easy, do they? simple and yeah, we'll just cut that off with a pair of side cuts but we're not concerning ourselves with that yet we can get these carburetors off so 10 millimeter I'll take them off right at the base here two 10 millimeter nuts take each side off Probably want to loosen these out too. Take the slides out. All right, so I got both of them loose now. Pull them off. Slide them through here. Pull the slides out. And they're joined together by this choke rod. Slides out. All right, they're off. I'll just take them over to the bench, drop the bowls, and start cleaning them out. It's looking a little leaky. Oh, look at that! It's a nice little counter pin they got in there. Take that off so we can separate them. All right, there we are. Now they got these clips on them, so that's easy to get off. So easy that you can't get it off. Luckily, Terrell's got a screwdriver right here. Crusted. Look at that float. Pretty crusty. Looks like got water damage in there. Have to give this a sandblast. Might have to pop these babies over in the ultrasonic. See if we can salvage that float. Hopefully there's no fuel or anything in it. I popped this one off on the first video. So I know that this one isn't as bad. Yeah, see, this one's not as bad. Look at that crap in there. There was nothing in that tank. We put fresh gas in there, so. Must have waterized up. All right, let me dump this out. Alright, carved a little L in the side there. I don't know if you can see that. But that's for the left side carb. So that way we won't get these confused. I don't know if it matters or whatever, but for if you want to drain them out, I'm sure you're going to want that facing out. So that just makes it easier for me because I'm an old man. So let's get this float out of here. Pins frozen in there. Always got to make it fun. I 
favorite tool, wire brush. So I know before I've used a little punch in these and sometimes you can break off this little arm if you're if it's really frozen in there and you're tapping way too hard, so that's kinda kinda dangerous. So I'm gonna use this little pair of vice grips. See if I can wiggle it out. And luckily it's not as bad as I thought. So that's out. Clean up that float. Gonna have to clean all this stuff up. Oh. Sounds like there's fuel in there. I can hear it. Yep. I got some uh, extra 175 carburetor floats and I'm pretty sure they're the same thing. So I'm gonna see if I can substitute those in for this. Cause this has got gas in it and we don't want that. Take out this hard as a carb. I got new ones because I know that these are leaking. Got a razor blade here. Gotta be careful. Don't want to cut yourself. There's it. Cuts it off. It looks like a lot of this is, will probably come off in the ultrasonic cleaner. Or come off with a little wire brush. Let me get some tools and I'm going to take this out. Take this main nozzle out. Take this little thing out. Probably take these out and start cleaning everything up. Okay, so I got this aftermarket float for my 175 and I ended up not needing them. And it looks looks pretty similar to this one, so I'm gonna at least give it a shot and see if it'll work. So that'll help me out at least. Okay, so now for this, eight millimeter takes this out. Takes out the seat. gasket under there so if you ain't got another one you might want to be careful and this will clean up so there's all that now we'll take out this main nozzle and that's a seven millimeter pretty nasty now we'll start taking these out Luckily everything's coming out pretty easy. Cause I know sometimes that stuff gets frozen in there. And you end up snapping stuff off and then you're having a real bad day. We don't want that. Ooh, look at that. Pretty nasty. I'm surprised this thing was running for as long as it was. Spring in there, so you don't want to lose that. Keep those together so we know. Looks like there's a spring in this one too. <laughs> yep, there it is. So yeah, spring in there, spring in there. Don't lose those. Okay, so now there it is. Pretty nasty. So if you don't have a ultrasonic cleaner or access to one, it looks like you'll be doing a lot of filing and sanding on it to get all that crusty stuff off. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip this one down, which is pretty much the same thing, and then toss these in the ultrasonic cleaner, get them cleaned up, 
Now I'm going to sandblast these two bowls out, get these nice and spiffed up, and then we'll come back and see what's happening. <laughs> Got the carbs in the ultrasonic right now getting cleaned up. So now I'm gonna give these bowls a blast, Terrell's blast cabinet. All right, well all that stuff's ultrasonic cleaning. I'm gonna clean up all these little pieces here with this wire brush and these guitar strings to run through all these little holes to get them nice and clean like that so after I get them all cleaned up we'll run the wires through them and then I'll show you everything all nice and cleaned up and hopefully we'll be able to start putting stuff back together <laughs> the fun part about cleaning the carburetor all that little meticulous work. All right, so all sandblasted out, ready to go. Got these out of the ultrasonic. I still cleaned them up with the wire brush because the ultrasonic's not gonna take all that scale off, so you're still gonna have to run a wire brush, but it definitely helps. Some other little things to look for. These needles, they have these little plungers on them that go up and down. You want to make sure those are nice and freed up and you want to make sure there's no grooves inside of here too. And on here there's little rubber o-rings so you might want to be aware of those too. If they're bad they might be missing or so you might have to replace that as well. And uh, I think that's pretty much for some little important things. So now we can start reassembling everything so I'm gonna start putting some of this stuff back in all right so now I know I gotta put these floats in and you gotta have them adjusted to a certain height or else it'll run crappy so uh, hey what's up Terrell just in time how you coming on them carburetors uh pretty good I think got them pretty well cleaned up and well, now I'm just getting ready to put these floats in, and I know you gotta adjust the height, and, and you also said something about the jetting, because I got some aftermarket air filters I'm gonna be putting on, so I don't know, maybe if you could give me some wisdom on that. I know you. Do you know back in the day, Slippers, before they had the inner screen and all this stuff, you know what they used to have? Uh, these things, manuals, well, yeah. books. I remember those. Yeah, and in this book has the information that you need. All right, perfect. On setting the floats, which I've already bookmarked because I figured you were gonna run into problems. Exactly. So on that 160, this is how they tell you to adjust the floats. It's not real scientific. That's what I like, simple. So according to the manual, and, and what we've seen online on the inner screen, this is how they want you to set this float. So you have to hold this at an angle. So you can see that that little tab in the center there, that's what's gonna contact the needle. So they want you to hold the, the carburetor at an angle to where that tab just starts to contact that needle. Then you're supposed to measure from the gasket space, which is below this lip here, to the top of the float. 0 0.78, which ends up being, What was it, 20 millimeters? 20 millimeters, yeah. Which would be the two on here on the millimeters, because each one of those marks is a millimeter, so that's 10, that's 20. 
on the other side of this gauge is in 30 seconds. So they said the nearest fractional dimension would be 25, 30 seconds. So if you flip this thing over, hold my finger right at the two, we're at 25, 30 seconds. So if you've got a scale like this, which is in 30 seconds, you can count out 25, 30 seconds. So that's how they want the float height. So just as that's contacting the needle. So this one we've got to bend. So we want it to go down, so we got to bend the tab up some. Now if you look at this manual real close, You know, this is, this is confusing. They should have put more information in the text there. Because they go, you know, turn the carburetor upside down and move the float until the float valve and the float arm contact slightly. Measure a distance H from here to here. Then they drew this little dotted line. So that dotted line is the lip right here. So that's how you can be confused when you're trying to adjust these floats if you've got one of these old climber manuals. So they want it from the gas, where the gasket surface is to there. But they also want you to hold it at an angle because you know when you're holding it like this it's starting to push on that pin a little bit. So they want you to hold it slightly until it just contacts that pin and then put your gauge on there and then adjust that tab. Which again, like I said, we have to bend this one up. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll show you. Another thing, Slippers, you need to replace these O-rings in here. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. Now I've got a dental tool that works really well. Where is it? Because I don't use dental tools because my teeth are perfect. <laughs> So you can get these at flea markets. Now I've got one that's got this little like flat spoon on the end of it. And I found this on working on these motorcycles and O-rings, this works real good for getting in that groove and digging that O-ring out. Just in case you have an O-ring say that you want to save. We're going to replace these, but say you got an O-ring you want to save and you got to get in there and dig it out with something and you're using a pick tool, this little dental tool with that little spoon on the end, I found, really works good for that. And it also works good for scraping that stuff out of there. See, makes that same noise like, like when you're at the dentist office getting your teeth cleaned. I wouldn't know anything about that, but I heard it makes this noise. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the noise it makes. When they're scratching on your teeth. Yep. Remember that noise? Clinging in my chopper. I know, a lot of you are cringing right now. Stop making that noise. No, I'm going to keep making that noise. You're turning the volume down now, aren't you? Isn't that annoying? That's very annoying. So we got it. Our float set. Where it's just making contact with that top of the pin there. And again, we're not building the Mars Rover here. It's a motorcycle, so that's close enough. And then we'll we'll worry about the jetting once he gets it running. Yeah, here's those air filters that I got. Yeah. Now this is your main jet, so that's going to control your high speed when you're at high RPMs. It's got a 95 in there right now. So we could always go up. To say a hundred. Yeah, I got some of those. If it's kind of fluttering, but we'll find out by closing up the choke as we're running it, because you could just reach down and pull on the choke, and if we're closing off that air, we're giving it less air and we're gonna give it more fuel. So that would mean that we would have to give it more gas, so we would have to have a bigger jet. Another thing we can try is moving the needle on the slide. Because the needle on the slide, you know, regulates the amount of fuel that goes through that main nozzle. That runs through the center of the carburetor. 
So when you move that needle up, because that needle has got clips on it, you can move them. So when you move that needle up, you're giving it more fuel too that way. Because you, you've raised that needle and you've lessened the restriction on that taper. So that would probably be the first thing we would try, is just moving the needle to see how it runs, see if it runs any better. If we have to do that, we may not have to do anything at all. We may just be able to put the carburetors on and put these air filters on and it may run perfectly fine. But those are things you have to mess with when you're messing with these things. When you're tuning them, you have to try different things. Also, I have a question. Does your book say anything about where I should start with on adjusting these? Yeah, there's in the, in the, in the section that I had marked here, it said for synchronization of the twin carbs is covered in the periodic maintenance and adjustment chapter, which I marked with a paper clip. This book is falling apart. It's as old as you, Slippers. It's pretty old. Where's that? Here's that paper clip. Look at that. Now I got to get tape. <laughs> so I highlighted it. The th throttle synchronization is done by checking that both throttle valves operate simultaneously. Adjust the throttle cable adjusters on the top of each carburetor to give the same amount of slack in each cable. Check that both throttle valves are fully open when the throttle is opened all the way. Adjust the cable adjusters if necessary. So what you're doing is you're turning the throttle and you're pulling both slides all the way till they stop. And then those adjusters on the top of the slides, you have to adjust them because you got two cables that go into one. So what I did on my 160 was I did that, adjusted the two cables into the one, and then I adjusted the slack in my cable at the throttle at the very top because there's an adjustment there instead of do, trying to do it on the carburetors itself because it does the same thing. You got one cable going into two. So if you put slack at the top of the throttle, that's also going to transfer slack down to the two on the carburetors. That way you're not trying to figure out how much slack you got on each one and then you're opening the slides at different. So do you get what I mean? So open the carburetors all the way, turn the throttle, lock the throttle somehow, then turn those adjusters until they just start to drop then you know that you got those two synced. Then add your little bit of slack in your throttle. You want like an eighth of an inch slack. Do that at the twist grip. Gotcha. But no, it doesn't tell you anything about these screws. It just says to turn them in and out until you get the right um, RPM. Yeah, to set carburetor, carburetor idle, Turn the air mixture screws on both carburetors until both exhausts sound the same. So you better have good hearing. Set the idle stop screws, which would be these. Because this is your mixture screw. And then this is your idle screw here. Set the idle stop screws until the engine is idling approximately 1,000 to 1,200 RPM. Turn the air mixture screws in or out to obtain the highest idle and then reset the idle stop screws. So what they're basically telling you to do is just start turning, turning on these screws. Till it sounds good. Till it sounds good to you. Yeah. Okay. With, your, with your ears, with your old decrepit ears. So I'm just gonna probably back them out. What one? I would turn. Uh, well, that's the idle. With. That's the idle. So this is your idle mixture screw. So I would turn that until it stops, and I would turn it out one full turn. That's a good starting point. One. Okay, there it is. One full turn on each one, and then don't mess with these until we get it on there. Okay. Now I gotta go tape up my book. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Finish putting them together. All right. Well, four to one. Dot com has all the parts you could need for your old Honda, so I hopped on there, ordered these gaskets. They said that they don't swell up when gasoline hits them, which is awesome, because that's what you want. Got these from them. 
Got these little air filters from them. They got a bunch of different ones. And I got the Petcock kit from them too. As well as the rubber for the Kickstarter. Because I remember last time it was hurting my foot through my slip. So maybe if I put the rubber on there it'll help my foot out a little bit. <laughs> All right, let me throw these babies back on and then throw them on there. And we'll see what happens. Well, I still gotta clean that pet cock out first, too. All right, now we got the tank off. We're gonna clean out this pet cock. Because it was leaking. Ooh, look at that. It's got that nice, watery, nasty gas in there. So I should probably drain out all that gas that I put in there, because it looks like it already turned bad. So, dump that out. Let's see what's all in this kit. That way I know what I can replace. Four to one, baby. So here's, here's what it comes with. Couple of O-rings, little screen, this gasket that was leaking. So we can pop these off. Gonna run all new fuel lines on here too. Ooh, yeah, now I can see why it was leaking. Look at that thing. Destroyed. Oop, don't want to break Terrell's tool. <laughs> Look at that thing. Nice. Alright, let's take this out of the bottom here. It's like the best new tool ever. Taking out these O-rings. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty well shot. Looks nice, right? Oh! Yeah. Look at that screen. Good thing we got a new one, because that thing's trash. Alright. There's a couple of uh, screws up in there. And then we can take the petcock off, get it all cleaned out. Better not break that tool flipper. I'm trying not to. I don't want to bring Then you're going to force me to go back to the dentist. And I don't like to go to the dentist. Yeah, I noticed that. Looks like whoever owned it previous. Oh, look at that. Looks like whoever owned it previous didn't have a JIS screwdriver. Because look at those babies rounded out. All right, so I'll pop this in the ultrasonic too. Get this all cleaned up. Sandblast that bowl out. And then uh, get this back together, pop her on, and then should be able to fire it up and see what happens. <laughs> Skins, where's he at? Sandblasted that bowl out, pretty nasty in there. Ran this through the ultrasonic cleaner. That's about as good as it's gonna come. This little hose is cracked, but that's pretty common on these older bikes like that. I'll just have to run it on the reserve. And then make sure you want to blow through all these and make sure they're all freed up. All kinds of stuff was shooting out of there. I know on one of my other bikes I had some trouble where one of them was pretty clogged up. It took me a while to unclog it. Gas tank, ton of rust in there, even though I had some gas in there, so I tried flushing as much as I could out, drained it out, blew it out as, as best as I could, so hopefully this petcock will uh, catch as much of it as, as it can. Alright, so let's put it back together. Give you a new O-ring for there. Put that on. Come out. Give you some new aluminum gaskets for there. Because the ones that I had on there were 
fiber ones. And they were uh, pretty roached out. Get in there. Screw the bowl back in. Thirteen millimeter. Tighten her up. All right. Drop this gasket in. Way better than that old one. You want to put this in. You want to put that wave washer in there. And this. There you go. There's your supper. That's what, that's what I always used to say. There's your supper. Yeah, you better hurry up, Clippers. Because this is my supper. Pretzels. It's a good supper too. Okay. Right. There we go. Looks like they're all working. All right. Put her on and put some new fuel lines to it. And then we'll see what happens. Hopefully no leaks and hopefully it runs. <laughs> Want a car pull? Uh, I'll do it right now. Okay, got the fuel lines ran. Sten. Sten's coming through. They make a Honda fuel line, which also works good for all these old motorcycles because they take this smaller line. I don't know, your, your lawnmower shop might carry this stuff or if you wanna just buy a roll for yourself if you're working on a lot of bikes. So we're all routed up. Now it's time to put some gas in here and see what happens. Hopefully no leaks. Safety oh, well, gas, gas, brother. Get a little tool. I'm probably gonna fill it all the way up to the top because you know that that makes total sense. This thing better run and start slipper. I know, I'm hoping so. Alright, don't want to put too much gas in there. Oh, well, I did a bad job. It might that stop. That one's flooding out. Maybe if we get it started it'll, it'll take it around. Maybe it'll seed up if we get it going. Yeah. It's not stopping anytime soon. Okay, so failure. And I shut the gas off. Okay, so we failed. And that's the end of the video. Now start it. Don't buy a it bike. Might, it might stop. Don't buy an old motorcycle because you're wasting your time and your money. Okay, got it up. Cool. Max Red, baby. Looks like those uh, gotta be adjusted. Yeah. It's called a screwdriver. Like I've heard of that before, but I wasn't sure. Cranked in all the way. Yeah, I told you I'd crank them in all the way. 
Try it again? Yeah. Yeah, this thing ain't gonna stop leaking anytime soon. I shut the gas off. I know. But it's not gonna stop. It's a bad job. Alright, no, if I turn it up. See. But it's running, running on its own power. Might be that. Dang nabbit. If that if that thing wasn't leaking, we could be riding this thing right now. Might be that crappy aftermarket float that I bought. I'm thinking that's what it is. Were those new needles you put in there? No. All the old original stuff. Might have to lap it in. Yeah, that's true. Pull that carburetor on that side. We'll find out. I'll go back to eat my uh, pretzel. Hey, Mr. Cameraman. Want some pretzels? Come on. Go get some pretzels. All right, here's a slip tip. So these crummy aftermarket floats, don't buy them. So that comes with that part number or whatever. You don't want this crap. It's garbage. That's why it was leaking. So that's, that's where that belongs. So you want to get yourself the OEM. Luckily, I had one that I was going to use on my 175, but luckily we're going to just throw it into 160 now. And oh, look. Look at that. Gas is on. No more leak. Like I said before, I think I had some troubles when I put them on my 175 and that's why I ended up taking them out and putting the originals back in. So when I go to rebuild that, I'm just probably going to buy a set of the OEM ones. That way I ain't got to mess around. That, right. that aftermarket stuff can be frustrating at times. Yeah, it's, it's hit and miss. Some yeah. stuff's good, some stuff, total garbage. You never know what you're getting. So 
So that's a tip out there for those floats. Get the OEM, baby. seat on and take it for a ride. Well, first off, I don't have any rear brake because uh, the cable is broken. <laughs> and the front brake is uh, a little sketchy too. It's pretty hard. I'm probably going to need another cable for that as well. Alright, so let's fire her up. Seems like it needs a little fine tuning, but that'll come in time. I hear music. Carnival music plays in my head all the time. Like I'm at a carnival. Still got some hesitation when you hit it in, and I even tried messing with the choke a little bit, and that didn't seem to really make a difference either. Okay. So, probably just needs an adjustment, I would say. Well, it runs, right? Yeah. Got well, it running. Hesitation is when you're taking off? Pretty much, yeah. Just thought it might clear out, but that didn't seem to be the case, and I didn't want to get too crazy on it. Rub it up yeah, and since you ain't got no brakes, so maybe open break. up these low speeds a little bit. Another half a turn. Get a little more fuel. At least we know it runs and drives. Yeah. Good. Battery's still uh, good. headlights bright. The good find slippers. Yeah, I'm loving this little baby. Isn't it cool? Yeah, I can't wait to get it uh, all dialed in and everything restored. Get all the cables and everything. But when we race, I'm gonna turn that screw back in a half a turn. Yeah, I don't know. I may even have to turn it out just a tad bit more. Get Runs bit good more with juice. those air cleaners on there? Yeah, seems like it. It looks cool. It's a neat looking bike. 
can't well, wait to see when it's all done. When you put your special slippers touches to it. You did an excellent job on that 10XL. I can't wait to see what you do on this bike. Yeah. All right, well, we got it all cleaned up and dialed in. Hope you guys learned a few things on the carburetors on these babies. Maybe you can stick around for the restoration on this thing too, coming up next. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram. You know what Terrell always does. Follow us. Subscribe to this YouTube channel with all your junk lawnmowers and your old vintage motorcycles. And like I always used to say, there's your supper. Woo! Honda CL160. Got it running and riding. Carburetor's clean. Woo! -hoo!